Hello everybody. In the last class, we discussed static one hazard. We saw that an otherwise optimized uh, circuit uh, can create issues in terms of producing glitches, which could be troublesome in some of the applications. And in that context, uh, we found that uh, how to detect uh, such hazard for uh, certain kind of you know circuits and uh, that is static one hazard and how to cover it. So, in today's class, we shall look at static zero hazard and uh, dynamic hazard. So, these are the two things that we shall take up today. So, in static zero hazard, we shall uh, again uh, the condition uh, that we find uh, is similar uh, is analogous to what was there for static one hazard. In static one hazard, if we remember the Boolean expression reduced to something like a plus a prime equal to 1 just to recollect the Boolean expression reduced to a plus a prime equal to 1 which always needed to be at 1, but because of the propagation delay involved in generating uh, a prime through an inverter we found a negative going pulse or a glitch occurring and we found how to uh, detect that and how to cover that. So, in static zero hazard what is happening the Boolean expression for a certain combinations of the input reduces to a an expression which is something like a a prime which should generate 0 uh, as far as the logic uh, of the circuit is concerned, but because of the involvement of these uh, time delay finite propagation delay in generating the not gate output there is a glitch. Okay. So, this glitch will be a positive going plus a uh, positive going pulse. Okay. So, how does it occur? So, if you look at uh, the example. So, this uh, the input a is going from changing from 0 to 1 okay. and because of the input is input is going from 0 to 1 a bar is going from 1 to 0, but it takes a propagation delay which is propagation delay for this inverter this not gate going from high to low whatever time it requires the finite propagation delay associated with this circuit whether it is a uh, TTL based circuit or a CMOS based circuit there is the uh, that delay associated is actually included in this duration time duration the tau 1 you see. Okay. So, for this end gate this particular time duration this 0 to tau 1 that one you see over here is the time when both the inputs are at logic high log 1 right. So, because of which whenever they are at 1 both of them are at 1 after the propagation delay involved for the and this particular uh, and gate to go to uh, logic high. So, it will go to high and whenever it goes to low it will go to low. So, during that period it remains high. So, this is this positive going uh, pulse uh, that you see uh, for a short duration uh, because of the propagation delay involved here. Okay. So, but for the AND gate you know uh, I mean AND relation for this kind of relation you should always get a 0 which is not happening because of the finite proportion delay. So, in static one, a static 0 hazard output should always remain static at 0 according to the Boolean logic, logic but glitch occurs because under certain input con, you know condition. So, you look at one uh, practical example. So, if you realize the truth table that we had seen before. Uh, for the static one hazard problem the same truth table if you try to realize through uh, product of some POS then what we will we get we will get a relationship something like this. So, this is a known problem this uh, relationship we have seen earlier in the course okay. and to realize that we are having A or C generated here and A prime B generated over here and these two are ended through this end gate. Okay. Now, con consider the input combination B is equal to 0. So, this is 0, C is equal to 0. So, this is 0 okay. and A is going from 0 to 1. So, A initially is at 
0 right. So, which is making initially this is at 1 ok. So, 0 and this is at 1. So, this output is 0 right this output is 1, but for the AND gate we need both the output uh, to be 1 to be out the for the output to be 0. Now, this goes from 0 to 1 ok. So, this AND gate after the propagation or gate after the propagation delay goes to 1, but this one till this time this uh, not gate output uh, not gate output changes will remain at 1 ok. So, this output 1 goes to 0 after this propagation delay and this propagation delay ok. So, because of which here it goes to 1 after 1 propagation delay and it goes to 1 after 2 propagation delay if tau 1 and tau 2 are same. So, momentarily for 1 propagation delay both the inputs are at high ok which makes the output high. So, because of which this glitch the one that we are talking about occurs in this circuit ok. So, for other input combinations it will not occur. So, that is what it is mentioned uh, in the earlier class also and that we uh, take note of here that for a specific uh, you know condition combination uh, these uh, thing uh, the glitch occurs. Now, how we detect static 0 hazard? So, static 0 hazard detection is similar to static 1 hazard detection ok. So, to logically adjacent cells with output 0 in the k map if it is not covered by common sum term ok. In static 1 hazard it was to logically adjacent cell with output 1 not covered by common product term ok. So, in this case it is the uh, output having 0 which goes into the making of you know PUS uh, uh, expression they are not covered by common sum term. So, from the Carnot map we can find this one and uh, if you look at the Boolean expression which ultimately reduces to a a prime kind of thing a variable and its complement and it together for certain input combination ok. So, we do not need to go up to the uh, expression level some simply by looking at the Carnot map <coughs> grouping from which the expressions are generated we can uh, <coughs> detect uh, uh, presence of a static 0 hazard. So, we look at <coughs> one example. So, this is an example where you see the uh, these zeros this is the optimized expression all right. So, uh, these two zeros and these two zeros they are uh, grouped together and uh, a plus b prime is one term this term and b plus c is the other term and they are ended together ok. So, there is a potential uh, glitch uh, static 0 hazard why? because this 0 and this 0 they are logically adjacent ok and they are not covered by one common sum term. Is it clear? So, how when does the glitch occurs? When a is equal to uh, 0 and c is equal to 0, a is equal to 0, c is equal to 0. So, this is the two cases when a is equal to 0 and c is equal to 0 and b changes from 0 to 1, then the glitch occurs ok. Uh, going by whatever we had just discussed the example, so similar example over here. Now, uh, if you look at the other uh, truth table, a similar truth table uh, uh, in relation to what we discussed in the static 1 hazard. So, there we grouped the 1s, now we are grouping the zeros. So, this is one group and this is one group and they are gen <coughs> generating term b plus c and b prime plus c prime and we are ending them together ok to get the POS representation. Now, we see that the logically adjacent zeros these two they are under common sum term these are two logically adjacent zeros they are under common sum term and these zeros are not logically adjacent. So, they need not be covered by co common sum term ok. So, we do not have any hazard here we do not have any static 0 hazard here ok. So, that is what we take from this particular uh, uh, truth map table and convert it to Carnot map ok. Now, we look at uh, a 4 variable example. So, this particular example you see the presence of you know zeros and uh, ones. Uh, in that truth table the UA uh, it has been mentioned and to get the first the optimized expression. So, we look for grouping of zeros with largest uh, you know possible group size. So, uh, this is one group this is one group right which is generating this term A 
plus C, right? Then we have uh, this particular group, all four zeros they can be grouped together, right? So this is generating C plus D prime, and the other two zeros, these two zeros and these two zeros, they can be part of one uh, group, okay? Group of four members. So that is uh, between them. 0 0 so b plus c is remaining with 1 uh, so c prime so this is the third term that we are getting which is covering all the zeros right so this is the optimized expression but does it uh, have a uh, you know uh, uh, static zero hazard so for that what we need to examine we need to see whether the logically adjacent zeros are covered by common sum terms or not these are logically adjacent zeros co covered by common sum term but here is one logically adjacent zero, okay? To, I mean zeros, one pair. They are not covered by common sum term, okay? So this might uh, uh, lead to a glitch for a specific input combination, right? So is there only one uh, possible way the glitch can occur? No. You can see that there is another such thing, okay? Which is they are you know logically adjacent, and uh, but they are not covered by co uh, you know common sum term. Is that the only in you know, a second only possible thing? Uh, there is there are no other ways glitch can occur. In this particular example, there is another way uh, uh, glitch may occur. If you <coughs> look at this zero and this zero, okay, it is they are also logically adjacent. So and there is no common term common sum term covering them. Okay, so there can be a, a glitch for that also. Right. So, what are the in these uh, possibilities, the combinations? So, between these two, you can see A, B, and uh, A, B remaining 0, D remaining 1, and C changing from 0 to 1. So, A remaining 0, B remaining 0, D remaining 1, and C changing from 0 to 1. So, A 0, B 0, D 1, C changing from 0 to 1. Okay. So, this is a case where a, B, D are 0, 0, 1, C changing from 0 to 1, a uh, uh, glitch, a negative, uh, a positive going false will occur when it was logically it is supposed to be at uh, logic 0. If you look at the expression, if you substitute it, we can see that the same thing will be happening. So, A is equal to 0, so this is 0, right. Then, uh, uh, b is equal to 0, b is equal to 0, this is 0 and d is equal to 1, right. So, d is equal to 1 means d prime is 0, right. So, what we will get c and c and c prime. So, c c prime is occurring, right, a variable and its complement. So, this is a case where there is a possible, uh, you know, uh, glitch, okay, a glitch will occur if we make the make a transition if the input c make a transition from 0 to 1. Similarly, you can check for the other cases also, right. So, this is the case when uh, 1 a is 1, right, b is 0, right and d is 1, d is 1 between these two, right. So, a 1, b 0 and d is 1 and c is changing a transition from 0 to 1, okay glitch occurs and the last one, the third one that we talked about, these two. So, A is 0, B is 0, D is also 0, right, between these two zeros, and C changes from 0 to 1, C changes from 0 to 1, okay. So, there is a glitch occurring, right. So, this is the way we can figure out three such, uh, you know, possible uh, glitches uh, and the this particular realization, this particular realization has a uh, uh, has static zero hazard. Okay. Now to cover, we do not we have detected, but we need to think of how to cover it. And again, we follow uh, the logic that we followed uh, for static one hazard covering. So, the one that causes uh, the uh, specific hazard, we need to make sure that that cause does not arise. So, for that uh, what we will do? Simply we shall see that the adjacent logically adjacent zeros are 
covered by one common sum term. So, in the previous example, uh, uh, in uh, this particular example, right, what we are looking at this uh, uh, two uh, zeros, right, we are covering by uh, a common uh, sum term. Okay, so this is a this is the example with which actually we started. Uh, so, this particular circuit is of uh, this is one sum term a plus c right a plus c okay. and this is another sum term which is a prime plus b a plus c and a prime plus b right. So, this is the one with which we started uh, today's discussion right. Uh, so, if we quickly go back. So, this is the circuit we started with right and we found that there is a uh, possibility of a glitch. So, we are looking at covering this particular uh, uh, hazard. Okay. So, these are the two terms right and then the common term over here is B and C. So, we are forming a group of them. So, a group of it. So, B plus C. So, when we are just forming this term, this is so called redundant term in terms of you know optimization problem but uh, uh, together it solves the problem. I mean the addresses the uh, static 0 hazard and what how does the circuit changes. So, basically this is the B plus C that comes over here and when B and C are 0, these two are 0, this output is 0 and this holds this is the AND gate input. So, if there is a 0 it will be always a 0 right and even if some changes are occurring over here A going from 0 to 1 that is not going to the final output. Okay. So, this is similar to what we had seen in case of static 1 hazard, a third end gate was there which was feeding to the final OR gate. Okay. So, a just analogous thing in terms of POS representation, is it clear? Uh, so, now we look at the other example, the four variable example and there are three uh, glitches, uh, uh, three possible you know glitches that were was to be covered that were to be covered and uh, so in this case what we are finding uh, we find that uh, to cover this one and this one i mean these two zeros these two zeros we can form a larger group isn't it we can form a uh, larger group i mean the group of zero otherwise you could have one term over here another term one common sum term right so then we had, would have required three uh, two such terms with three literals so but we know that we can have a larger group group of four which will make sure that all adjacent zeros like these two and these two are under one common sum term and for that what we are having so in this b is remaining constant and d is remaining constant b is remaining constant with zero and d is remaining constant with one so b plus d prime is the term that will be required okay and the other thing is this zero and this zero that was uh, that were to be put under one common sum term okay so one option is to have you know like this but again that will require three literals literal cost would uh, increase and what uh, we would uh, like to do uh, to avoid that uh, we will be having a larger group like this with only two variable involved so that is a plus uh, b so, because ab is remaining constant over four this uh, four zeros okay so with all of them together we can see that the static uh, zero hazard for this circuit all the three uh, possible cases are covered okay right So, far uh, we had uh, seen the static 0, static 1 hazard and static 0 hazard uh, using AND or uh, and OR AND uh, kind of you know two level circuit. We are only talking about two level circuit here as we have uh, noted before. So, if we had used instead uh, you know NAND NAND or NOR NOR for realization of this two level circuit, okay, uh, what would have been the case? Okay, we may have a certain curiosity about it. So, let us look at uh, one uh, quick example. 
So, if uh, this is a realization of a prime c plus a b. Okay. So, this two level realization in this case is achieved by using only NAND gates. Okay. So, these are the two NAND gates and finally, this is the third NAND gate which is just uh, combining the output of the previous two NAND gates. Okay. So, this is we are familiar with from our uh, week 2 discussions how we are getting uh, this kind of circuits. We can use De Morgan's theorem also on and or and then we can get an and and uh, kind of circuit. Okay. So, in this case what happens? So, we had uh, seen before. So, we continue from there that a bar uh, plus a this comes when b and c are 1 is not it b and c are 1 uh, a and a bar plus a plus a bar kind of relationship is coming. So, that is uh, has a you know uh, potential glitch and when a goes from 1 to 0 right that is the static uh, uh, the glitch will occur right. So, uh, let so what is happening over here this is NAND NAND earlier we had uh, studied and dot. Uh, so, uh, in this case initially let us consider all uh, this situation b, uh, b is 1 c is 1 and a is at 1. Okay. So, a is at 1 means this NAND gate uh, not gate output is 0 which is fine. So, what are the corresponding NAND gate outputs? So, this is 0, 1, 1, this is 0, and this is 0 and 1. NAND gate 0 is the forcing input. So, this is the output is 1. Okay. So, 0 and 1 output is 1, which is fine. Now, this is the thing that you see that at this point of time, at this point of time, NAND gate is making this input A is making a transition A to uh, 1 to 0 right so this has become 0 after one you know uh, delay it will become 1 right so but here this 0 to 1 this 0 to 1 that you can see goes after one propagation delay over here so it will not when it is becoming 1 it is not immediately you know going to uh, 0 because input 2 is fed is delayed I mean the input of uh, 1 is delayed by the propagation delay of the NOT gate. So, for one such delay period of this NOT gate both of them are 1 both this one is 1 this one is also 1. So, this 1 1 will make the output 0 for that amount of time including uh, involving all the propagation delay of this gate and this gate. right? So, that is the glitch we are talking about. So, the similar glitch occurs the one kind of thing that we had seen uh, for that relation it is occurring over here also. Okay. So, uh, how to cover it? So, to cover so this B and B C will be the one that we had seen we earlier we this is the one that we had considered one and gate and it was going to the third input of the OR gate. Similarly, it will be B C uh, NAND one NAND gate will be there with B and C. right? and this will go as the third input over here. Okay. Similarly, for uh, POS uh, realization right, uh, if we go for uh, NOR NOR right, we shall have uh, B is equal to 0, C is equal to 0. This is the uh, you know uh, snapshot of the uh, uh, different logic values. Then A goes from 0 to 1. Okay. So, A goes from 0 to 1 over here and then a bar goes from 1 to 0 like this with this propagation delay. So, momentarily both of them are uh, having. Uh, so, this is having 1 sorry and this is also having 1. right? So, for a NOR gate 1 is the forcing input. So, this is 0 at that time this is also 0. So, 0 0 the output is becoming 1. Okay? So, this is something that we uh, take note of that uh, whether you realize by NAND NAND or NOR NOR or the corresponding AND or OR, or AND the result remains the same and the covering is uh, similar. Okay. And uh, one might uh, note that if we can uh, introduce in this path a delay which is which is you know uh, similar to this delay then this can be avoided. Similarly, if we can add you know a buffer which is providing this amount of delay, okay. but that is uh, we, we only to be careful that this delay is added in appropriate uh, amount otherwise uh, uh, it will not 
uh, help the situation. So, better to cover uh, in this manner, but uh, by adding delays also you can avoid it. Okay. So, uh, dynamic hazard we shall discuss now. So, dynamic hazard is the case when there is a potential for multiple transitions. Okay. Uh, while the circuit is required to make one transition from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0, but it is making more than one transition. So, this is what is known as dynamic hazard. So, basically uh, uh, the changes the way you have seen in the uh, right hand side. So, this kind of uh, you know changes take place and uh, for this one uh, would notice that one of the input variable which is actually causing this thing is to have three or more paths to the output and number of levels involved. Earlier we saw that there are two levels. So, number of levels should be three or more okay. and inherently one can see the re relationship like what you see over here a plus a prime and a or a plus a uh, prime and a this kind of thing. So, a in a inherently there is a static 1 and static 0 kind of relationship emerging somewhere and this is what is uh, visible in a dynamic hazard. Uh, causing circuit. Okay. So, we shall we'll look at one example, there is a uh, example where you can see uh, this is A c plus B c prime right? Uh, and ended with C d prime and we are looking at a situation when A is equal to 1, B is equal to 1 and D is equal to 1. So, potential you can see C plus C prime and C prime this kind of you know, situation emerging. Okay. So, this is just example. So, what happens at that time you can see uh, from uh, this particular diagram. So, this is the uh, uh, value of the other inputs okay. and C is uh, making a change these are the outputs y 1, y 2, y 3, y 4 and y intermediate outputs okay, for the purpose of plotting. So, C makes a change uh, makes a you know uh, transition from 1 to 0 right? and then because of that y 1 will go to go from 0 to 1 because d is held at 1 right. So, then it will go to uh, 1 after 1 propagation delay fine. What happens to y 2? y 2 is AND gate right. So, if input changes from 1 to 0, uh, so the output will become also 0 because c was 1, c was held at 1. So, output was 1 because of presence of a as 1. So, because of which this y 2 is also becoming 0 after 1 uh, propagation delay. We are considering same logic family more or less same in you know, a propagation delay tau. Okay. After that it remains same uh, at that value. What happens to y 3? y 3 is end of b which is 1 and end of y 1. So, both of them when it is 1 the output will become 1. So, both of them are 1. So, this is uh, y 1 is 1 input right? and b is already 1. So, it goes to 1 over here. So, it will take time 1 propagation delay for this end gate right? for which y 3 becomes 1 over here. Now, what happens to y 4? So, y 4 is odd of y 2 and y 3. right? Any one of them high output will be high that is the idea. So, this is the y 4 we are talking about. So, this y 4 if you look at we, are, we need to look at y 2 and y 3 right. When any one of them is 1 the output will be 1. So, you see that y 2 is 1 here this is low, but y 2 is becoming low in this place. So, after one propagation delay this will become low right and y 3 is going high here in this place. So, after one propagation delay this will become high right. Finally, y 4 and y 1 and it together is the y right. So, this is y 4 and y 1. Okay. So, this is the y 1 both of them need to be high. So, y 4 was 1 right. So, this one making it high after one propagation delay right both of them need to be high y 4 right. So, after that this y 4 
has gone low here. So, that is making low in this place, right. Then y 4 goes high. So, this is, go, is going high, okay. So, then what you see the y is like this and if you look at the, uh, the corresponding logic here c plus c prime and c prime. So, basically it is c c prime plus c prime. So, c prime only. So, when uh, c changes from 1 to 0, output should go from 0 to 1. But here output is going from 0 to 1, then again coming to 0 and then again going to 1. So, instead of one transition, it is making multiple transition. So, this is what is uh, seen as dynamic hazard and how to cover it? It is relatively more difficult than static 0 and static 1 hazard if to see what is the this inherent static 1 hazard can be seen over here because of the C plus C prime kind of relationship and to cover it we will be having it is happening for A is equal to 1 B is equal to 1 case which you have seen investigated before. So, you add one additional term right A B without uh, uh, I mean uh, making any difference in the truth table as such this is the redundant term. So, that will be coming in uh, parallel to this as A B A and B right and that will be getting connected over here right and after that you will be seeing that when uh, your A B and B is equal to 1 right. So, this is at 1 A B is held at 1. So, 1 and C D prime. So, basically 1 and C prime that is what we will get or C prime. Okay. So, only one transition will take place. So, with this we end uh, today's discussion very quickly summarizing uh, what we discussed today. Uh, static 0 hazard output should remain static at 0, but glitch occurs for certain input combination. Static 0 hazard can be detected by examining the Carnot map and the or the Boolean expression. It can be avoided also by including uh, additional sum terms and uh, appropriate delay uh, I mean uh, that we have noted. In dynamic hazard uh, potential for multiple transition exist uh, and uh, instead of you know only one which is required from the logic relation and uh, it uh, requires three or more level of circuit and uh, the inherent implicit static one static zero hazard if uh, identifying identification of that and covering can avoid its occurrence. Thank you.